If you've been dreaming of doing a kitchen makeover, you're going to want to see this. Sharon shows us how easy it can be by giving a small apartment kitchen a facelift with some paint, some new accessories, and a bold color. This is a very familiar kitchen layout for apartment and condo dwellers. I really love the vintage sort of rounded details, the solid wood cabinets. So there's a lot to work with here. The homeowners don't want to spend a ton of money, but I think we can do a fantastic facelift with, of course, some paint. A few key upgrades have really transformed this kitchen. Now the homeowners have a very traditional style with heirloom furnishings and a beautiful antique rug collection, so I took that as inspiration to help marry that style with the kitchen. So for starters, I used Tofino Sunset in this cute little architectural nook. I love the original rounded edges of this and it's such a perfect spot to accent the teacup collection and the glassware and it kind of adds a pretty whimsical touch. So further with the color side, we used cloud white, a nice sort of creamier white for the upper cabinets and then added a trim detail just to bring a little bit more of an ornate feel to tie in with the rest of the space. For the lower cabinets, however, I went with wide blue. Same trim detail, but then we also added on the lowers and the uppers a nice champagne bronze hardware, which ties in with some of the gilded gold from some of the accessories throughout the space. We also added a new faucet in the same finish to complete the look. Now for the wall color, I used Bare, B-A-R-E, a really pretty cream that makes the perfect backdrop throughout the rest of the apartment. Now without changing the major components of the kitchen, the cabinets, the backsplash, the countertop, or the floor, we did a full-on color makeover that's rather inexpensive and allowed the kitchen to work seamlessly with the rest of the apartment. Sharon, I love the color you chose for the lower cupboards, the molding details and the hardware also made a huge difference, right? Yes, Trace, absolutely. Paint and just changing the hardware is a big difference, but then you have the opportunity, look at the trim, think about it, because in this case, adding the trim really suited the style of the homeowners. It really changed the whole look of the kitchen. Now, we do this segment often because it really is a way to save a ton of money and you can buy yourself some time until you're ready to do the big reno. So what is step number one, Sharon? All right, well, you know that prep takes the majority of the time. Like I usually say around 80% of the time. So it's not fun, but if you're doing it yourself, it's critical. So you want to remove the hardware. So it might sound obvious, but take the hardware off makes a big difference. You wanna find a nice big area where you can lay all your kitchen cupboards down for a couple of days while you're doing the project. Um, laying them flat makes a big difference. You wanna, you know, paint is obviously going to fall. So you want it to lay flat and then it'll level itself out. Here's a great tip, Tracy. Label all the kitchen cabinets. Yep. Figure out your own labeling system alphabetical numbers whatever but you want them to go back in the exact same spot if you can what's next so then it's important to clean and sand and I'm putting them both in together but cleaning really important to degrease so you can use dish liquid like a good dish liquid will do it um, but trisodium phosphate is something I tend to use and then sand it so when you sand it, if it, depending on the surface, you want to get it, you know, get it nice and rough. You're basically deglossing the surface, which is really, really important. So again, after you've sanded it, you kind of have to clean again <laughs> because you want to get rid of the, that residue. So if you have a tack cloth or just sort of a damp cloth, use that just to make sure you get all the residue. The smoother the surface will be much better for your top coat. Okay. And then also you say if you are adding trim, <laughs> now's the time to do that. Oh my goodness, absolutely. So before you prime, you want to add trim. So if you are going to do that, <laughs> this is your chance. So you can do something traditional like we did here and like we did on tape. So you can get something decorative, sort of install it inside. Or you can do something a little bit more like a shaker, whether it's um, flat or decorative on the outside. And then again, you just, you know, you have to be a little handy with a miter saw and um, you might just want to glue it and then just make sure you clamp it until it's, it's nice and soft solid, but then you're ready for priming. <laughs> okay, we need to get into priming because it's probably the most important step in the process, right? And when it comes to the prep work? Yes. 
If you need to prime, it is very important, and it's really important that you think about the material because, of course, kitchen cabinets can be a lot of things. They can be laminate, they can be wood. So if you've got a laminate situation or something that's maybe still really shiny and you've done your best to sand it but you still feel like it's a bit too smooth, then you want to use something like Styx Primer, and that is exactly what it says. It sticks really well to hard-to-paint surfaces. It dries nice and quickly, so within three to four hours you can recoat. If you're getting into something that's more like raw wood, Wood, then you want to use an oil primer or, or an advanced primer or also like fresh start primer so what I suggest is if you're unsure definitely talk to your Benjamin Moore retailer and they'll be able to help you figure out which of those primers you should use another important tip that's kind of along the same lines as priming is after you prime it's a good chance to sand again okay so just sand with a smooth or like a 200 grit paper after you've primed and that just prepares the surface so that it's nice and smooth, which will again make the top coat that much smoother. Yeah, the truth of the matter is you're never gonna wanna look at a sander again <laughs> when you're done. Exactly. But it is so important. Okay, so the prep work is so necessary, but the top coat is really where the fun begins. So what products would you use? And do you have a favorite one? So as far as the product, Benjamin Moore has two really great products for kitchen cabinets and, and furniture painting, that sort of thing. Advanced paint and cabinet coat. Now they're both waterborne, meaning that you can clean up your hands and your tools with water, so that's kind of handy. But advanced is a waterborne alkyd, so it's definitely more like a traditional alkyd, so you do need to have proper ventilation. Um, you, you know, it's going to smell a little bit longer and it's going to take longer to dry, which is kind of a good thing if you're looking for a super smooth finish, but it can also be not so great if you're trying to get something done really quickly. So you want to think about that. It does come in a lot of sheens, so you could do matte, pearl, semi-gloss, and even a high gloss in advance. So it does have some, um, some great benefits that way. Now with cabinet coat, it is a urethane acrylic, so it's more like a traditional latex paint. So it washes up like latex paint and it dries really fast or, or faster like a latex paint. So you want to think about that if you're doing a project in a weekend, it might be a great, pro a great product for you. And also, which is really cool, is you can use cabinet coat to paint on laminate countertops like melamine directly without priming. So again, you can save time in that, in that respect. Now, you asked my preference. Mm -hmm. Personally, I love Advance. I'm kind of a traditionalist and I love the the old look and feel of traditional oil paint so since this one turns into an oil paint once it's once it's dry really um, I love to get that nice super smooth finish and I don't mind waiting 16 hours in between coats <laughs> but that's me either way make sure you use a high quality brush for sure a high quality roller I really like the microfiber rollers now because they don't leave any any um, any sort of dust or, or lint so those are great and again the the material that you use the material you're painting on and the top coat product will make all the difference in the world now what would you say share is the is the one step that people like to skip but that makes a big difference you know what it's the sanding after primer and I've totally done this myself a lot a lot of times I forget um, and I even did it on this cabinet here where I use cabinet coat and the thing is I can feel it where I sanded on these ones here it's nice and smooth and so it makes a big difference in the top coat so really take the time do the sanding after the primer really fine take the dust off and then do your top coat thank you so much great information